you think about being this far out over the water? Uh, I don't mind it. I just, like, don't think about it. Yeah, I, I trust her. Yeah, just pretend you're uh, over the land. I mean, just... Our engine doesn't go on every land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, Tom. <laughs> yep. My name is Brian Chase. I buy and sell business jets, turboprops, and helicopters so that I can afford to feed my love of flying. My wife Kim, son Thomas, and I recently purchased our own aircraft, a Cirrus SR-22 that needed some love and attention. Join us on our journey as we experience the joys of personal flying, meeting new people, and learning how to become more advanced and more proficient pilots. This is the Chase Aviation Channel. Good morning, aviators. Brian. Kim. And Thomas. Here with you this morning. We are uh, really excited. We just left Jamestown and we are heading directly south. Uh, first stop is gonna be Orangeburg, South Carolina, then Fort Pierce, Florida. We're going to overnight there and then we're going to the Bahamas. Yay. So we're really excited to bring you this video. Um, I, we don't have experience flying, first of all, international in this airplane together as a crew. Um, but I have tapped into 16 years of friendships and uh, contacts throughout the industry, operators that have been really helpful in um, telling us how to do this and uh, how to comply with everything. So. Uh, there's lots of good videos on YouTube about Bahamas flying. I did not find one that really showed the customs handling, like all that process. And we're going to try to bring as much of that to you as possible. So anybody have anything else to say? Want to add anything? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. There we go. I stole your line. <laughs> so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Orangeburg traffic, Cirrus 817 Bravo Kilo is turning downwind, uh, left downwind for 35, Orangeburg. Orangeburg 817 Bravo Kilo is turning left base for 35, Orangeburg. Feels windier. It does, yeah. 500. Hi. Orangeburg, 817 Bravo Kilo is final for 3-5, Orangeburg. All right, field made, flaps full. We're gonna land nice and long. You got 4,500 feet. Yep. Orangeburg, uh, 817 Bravo Kilos, clear of all runways on Alpha for the ramp. There's somebody Help over serve there. Self-serve fuel. That sign for you. Oh yeah, it's good B-roll right there, babe. Oh, Very there's a guy right there too. So Orangeburg, South Carolina, great little self-service uh, fuel tank there, five seventy a gallon. When everywhere else is six fifty or more, that was pretty terrific. Pulled right up. We were there for a few minutes, topped off, and went in. Used the restroom. Nice little FBO. Um, I think it's unmanned. It was unmanned when we were there. They may be manned during the week though, um, but there was a key to get in and. Great little place, perfect stopover, halfway there, a little bit beyond halfway there for us. And after that, we loaded up and got back in the sky. 
Uh, number roll 817, Bravo Kilo, Columbia Approach. Uh, release for departure, clearance void if not off in five minutes. When entering control airspace, uh, fly heading 180. Okay, clearance void if not off in five minutes. Uh, upon entering airspace, 180 on the heading 817, Bravo Kilo. Warning for traffic, series 817, Bravo Kilo's departing runway 5. Airspeed is alive. Gauges are in the green. There are 60 knots. November 3285, Bob. Columbia approach, Columbia altimeter is 3006. And we're off. Hello, Jack Tanner, Mike Tango, 210. Are you ready? For H03, Mike Tango, Jack Tanner, Roger. Yeah. Is that mine? Yeah. Hey everybody, we're uh, checking in with you. We're just out of uh, Orangeburg. Uh, got up to altitude, got everything set and ready to go. Three, which you might turn 30 degrees right. And decided to have a little lunch. Thank you, dear, for packing this. Right. I'm starving. Yep, let's eat. Anyway, four pairs in like two hours. Two hours and two minutes remaining. So, see you then. Peace out. Remember three, one, zero, I hadn't realized that the rear camera there has the power still plugged into it, and when it does that, it makes this awful machine gun sound. So bear with me through the end of this video. I hadn't. Oh, it's still floating. Ah. Bravo Kilo, turn right at Bravo, contact ground 119.55. Right at Bravo, over to ground, and uh, set Bravo Kilo. Hey, ground 8, what's up, Bravo Kilo is with you on Bravo. All right, what's up, Bravo Kilo, for Chris Gunn, stay parking. Going to the uh, Jet Center, App Jet Center, I think it is. What's up, Bravo Kilo, that's going to be Bravo Echo, hold short, runway 14. Bravo Echo, hold short, 14, set Bravo Kilo. Bravo Kilo, cross runway 14 Echo, Charlie 4, Charlie. Cross runway 14 Echo, Charlie 4, Charlie, some Bravo Kilo. For this ground, 6260 Tango Romeo has Oscar, ready right to taxi over at the A8 APP Jet Center. Traffic, traffic. Runway 108, taxi Charlie Alpha. Traffic, traffic. Charlie Alpha, give way to the 060 Romeo. Fort Pierce ground, experimental 23 Romeo Romeo, clear of runway 10 right at Alpha 2, would like to taxi uh, to get fuel at the FBO, please. Oh, there's a customer. 23 Romeo Romeo, Fort Pierce ground. Fort Pierce ground, Charlie Romeo, Fort Pierce ground, Charlie Romeo, All right, so I wasn't crazy on the idea of recording a government official. Um, but so a huge, tremendous, wonderful resource for us in this was AOPA, 
Um, I've been a lifelong uh, member and they have a, a website that's dedicated to Bahamas travel that uh, that website I'll, contains everything that you need to know and cross um, off your list before you go. Um, it was it was terrific. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you do your own research. Um, but so here's some of the advice um, suggestions, I should say, for making your trip to the Bahamas possible and, and easier, uh, sort of like the translated version of it. Um, obviously, I'm telling this as a U.S. citizen. You, you need U.S. passports. Um, if you don't have them already, get them. But it takes a long time, from what I'm told, six plus months. I've had mine for many, many years. You, you will need to set up a uh, CBP, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, eAPIS account. That is Electronic Advanced Passenger Information System. Um, set up that account. It doesn't take long. Um, here's the um, website information. Um, you will use that website to create your passenger manifest, your, which is your, for your notice of outbound departure that's leaving the United States. And you'll also use that website for creating your um, passenger manifest notice of inbound arrival. Both are important. Both are required. Um, so get that account set up ahead of time. Also, it's a different website. Here it is for your uh, U.S. Customs decal. You're required to have a, a decal attached to the aircraft. Um, I think it's only like $35 and it. We got ours in like a week. Um, so it was pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty cheap. If for some reason you don't get that in time, keep your receipt and that will suffice um, for clearing customs. Um, you will need a FCC operator permit. That's for yourself or whoever the pilot in command is going to be. Um, your aircraft also needs an FCC radio station license. Both of those are also easy to get uh, through the FCC's website. Um, I can't remember how much they were. It was, it was like a hundred and something dollars. Um, I don't think they ever expire though. So um, you need them for traveling outside of the U.S. You don't need them in the U.S. Uh, in a single engine piston like a Cirrus, even though we've got a parachute, we still really wanted to have life vests. Um, they're not required under Part 91 in the U.S., but I believe they are a requirement of the Bahamian authorities. But who cares? They're a really good idea. Um, I think ours were ours were made by Mustang, and they were like maybe a hundred and something bucks each. We're planning to do plenty of other over open water operations, so easy to justify. Um, the thing that was up for a little bit of debate and we gave some thought to is whether or not we needed a life raft. I don't mind ending up in the water. I really don't want to end up in water with sh with sharks. So um, we rented a life raft. Um, we did that through liferaftstore.com. They coordinate with the app Jet Center. And so all we had to do was pay the money. And the day that we were or arrived at Fort Pierce, they had the life raft waiting for us. Couldn't have been easier. It was like 50 bucks a day. Great peace of mind. Um, Everything that you need to fly legally in the United States, you also need to have to fly internationally um, to the Bahamas. So pilot's licenses, your medical, um, your aircraft needs its airworthiness certificate. You need an aircraft registration, pilot's operating handbook. Um, your aircraft has a data plate that says um, the serial number on it. Make sure that that is there and legible. Um, so for the day of when you're leaving, um, you need to file a notice of outbound departure that's through the eAPIS website. Um, when you do that, you have to create the passenger manifest, which means you have to list the passengers, crew, and all that. Um, that takes quite a bit of time. That was probably a half hour to load three of us in there. Um, it was my first time doing it, so it's probably easier the second and third times, but give yourself a little bit of time. The customs agent that we met with told us to file our notice of inbounds, so our return trip um, documentation through eAPIS prior to uh, our departure. Um, they do that because they're concerned that there may not be good cell service. It was fine cell service the whole time, so I'm not, uh, I, I didn't do that and no regrets there. We had great, great coverage. Um, the, the Bahamas uh, requires a C7A form to be filed. 
Um, we printed those off and brought them with blank and ended up not using them because the customs there was so terrific and welcoming that they helped us fill out their their on on site form. It's a three copy, so you know, I'd have to fill it out one time as opposed to filling the same thing out three times. You know, otherwise, just have a good time, relax. I was pretty uptight about it as I, I am about most things initially. And everyone kept telling me like, dude, chill. This is not that big of a deal. You got this. And they were all right. It was really not that big of a deal. Last final point. Um, I chose to fly IFR, file IFR flight plans. Um, it is possible to do it VFR. So don't let that discourage you if you're not, an, if you're not instrument rated. Uh, you have to file a defense VFR plan. I've never done that. I don't know how to do that. Um, but uh, I just prefer uh, the IFR. Um, that way they know you're coming. They know your route. And it's just a little bit better communications and uh, um, less variability to it. So uh, if you're not instrument rated private pilot, I would highly suggest that you go on with that unrelated point. But um, get trained. Always be learning. And uh, always be having a good time. <laughs> so we were considering pushing ourselves and trying to get to the Bahamas that night. But with uh, darkness closing in, we figured let's get a hotel room and go see what uh, Fort Pierce has to offer locally. There was some great food and obviously had a great hotel. There's Kim and Thomas. <laughs> great little sunset. That's backwards. <laughs> I mean this time. You ready? Ready. Fort Pierce Ground, Cirrus 817 Bravo Kilo. Cirrus 817 Bravo Kilo, Fort Pierce Ground. Hey, good morning. We'd like to pick up our IFR clearance over to Marsh Harbor at uh, 9000. Cirrus 7 Bravo Kilo, clear to Marsh Harbor Airport via radar vectors. Maintain 2000, expect 9 or 1000, one zoom after departure. Departure frequency 123.62, block 0075. Okay, we're cleared to uh, Marsh Harbor via radar vectors 2000. We'll expect 9000, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 123.62, squawking 0075, 817 Bravo Kilo. 817 Bravo Kilo, read back, correct, buzz ready, attack with uniform. Hey, Fort Pierce, uh, Sears A1 some Bravo Kilo is ready to taxi with uniform. Sir, right, Bravo Kilo, runway one zero right, taxi via Charlie Alpha. Okay, we're taxiing to 10 right via Charlie and Alpha, some Bravo Kilo. Okay, I'm off the brinks. Okay, so it's just this and then a left on Alpha, basically right at the runway. Yep. I'm going left here. Yep, and then there's a holding pad down here where you could do a run up maybe. See that? Okie dokie. Doors, we're going to keep, yeah, go ahead and close it. Not too hot out. Caps handle pin removed. Seatbelts are on. Is everyone secure? Yep. yep. Fuel quantity is good. Fullest tank. Fuel pump is still off. Nav radios are set. Cabin defrost brakes hold. Right, right, good. Right, for Pierce Ground, runway 10 right, taxi via Charlie Alpha. Yeah, Charlie Alpha to 10 right, wake up 258. Okay, all good there. Keto heat, we're leaving that off. Landing light, I'm leaving on. Flight instruments check and set. 063063, flaps 50, trim set for takeoff, flight controls free, and correct. Autopilot is disconnected. Okay, we're ready to go. Sure, say 17 Bravo Kilo, wind 170 at 12, fly heading 100, runway 10 right, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff 10 right and 100 on heading 817 Bravo Kilo. 
Boost pump on. Make Mike sure 319, go ahead and start to right turn out, please. Turning right turn out. Uh, White Cat 319, thank you. Number 663, see you pop uh, traffic 11 o'clock, four miles just off of runway 14. They're on the right turn out to the southwest. You can join the midfield right down when runway 10, right cleared for the option. All right, right here we close, go. Traffic approved. Watch, watch uh, we're searching for traffic, uh, clear for uh, midfield right down when run, runway 1-2, or 1-0, right, uh, 3-0, Papa. And number 3 Papa, you are number 1 for runway 1-0, right, clear for the option. Clear for the option, uh, number 1 on 1-0, right, 3 zero Papa. There we go, we're up, 80 knots, that was a good crosswind. Cheers, 7 Bravo Kilo, contact Palm Beach, departure on 123.62. 2362, 7 Bravo Kilo, see ya. Palm Beach, good morning, Sirius 817 Bravo Kilo, just south 4 Pierce, 1000 for 2000. 817 Bravo Kilo, Palm Beach Parker, raise our contact, commenting 5000. We're up to 5000, 7 Bravo Kilo. Five miles off the coast of Florida, and um, on our way feet. to to Marsh Harbor. Yep. Everything's um, so far so good. I think we just kind of accomplished the easy part. Filed our EAPIS last night um, in anticipation of it maybe taking an hour or two to get approved, but I think we had the approval in about 30 seconds. It seemed like maybe like realistically 10 minutes. Right, but they said uh, they need at least an hour. So for your planning purposes, don't wait till a few minutes, at least an, at least an hour before. I mean, overall, though, we uh, I'm sure you saw we had a nice little overnight at, uh, what was the name of the place? Honey? Miami American. Uh, Hutchinson, Island. Island. Hutchinson Island. Hutchinson Island Resort, uh, something or other. Um, and I'm going to say I had the best beer, Isla Morada, Coconut Key Lime Beer. Um, there's a brewery, I didn't know at the time, but there's a brewery like right next to the airport. Definitely recommend. It was good. It was like a taste of Florida, but it was still a beer. It wasn't sweet or anything. So I, I don't drink, so I didn't. I didn't have any of it. But my wife is definitely yeah. I into had one last good night, and it was lovely. So if you're in Fort Pierce, you should check it out. Actually, I think probably all of Florida has it. But what else? Can we give them anything constructive? Um, Fort Pierce Customs was terrific. Yeah. So we stopped by. Do you remember his name? He was so helpful. We just walked in there. We asked all of the questions, and he happily answered them all. Um, but they're super nice, Zero super friendly. And everybody says it's so easy, and I guess so far it is, and we'll continue to find out if that's really the case. I'm ready for the beach. Ready for the beach, that's for sure.
There, sir. Oh, no. Wow. Hello. 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 Oh my god, this thing is sensitive. Uh, Marsh Harbor, uh, you got a white Cirrus, uh, gonna be holding short of nine. Marsh, you got a white Cirrus holding short of nine. We're gonna try to sneak out after the Challenger. Marsh Harbor traffic, uh, Challenger 605, clearing runway nine in Marsh Harbor. Marsh Harbor traffic, Cirrus 817, Bravo Kilos is departing runway nine. Marsh Harbor. And hey, Marsh Harbor, you got a citation. Sub Romeo Yankee, we're on about three mile final for nine. Marsh Harbor. All right, we're out of here. Mixture Rich. Marsh Harbor traffic. Subs 50. Six mile on? final. Runway nine or Marsh Harbor. In case you couldn't completely tell, Marsh Harbor is very busy. There's lots of traffic and no control tower. Um, so it does take some patience uh, and very good VFR communications. 80 knots, flaps up. Miami Center, good morning. Cirrus 817, Bravo Kilo, 6,500 for 8,500. IFR to uh, Fort Pierce, please. I got that. Cirrus 817, Bravo Kilo, Miami Center, good morning. Squawk 4631, and I down. Squawk 4631, here comes a flash of Bravo Kilo. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed watching that video anywhere near as much as we enjoyed making it. Um, I have to say as always that I am extremely thankful, blessed, honored, and privileged to be able to afford my own airplane, fly my own airplane along with my beautiful wife and child. I have so much to be grateful for. Um, I also have to give a special shout out to the many people who helped us um, research the things that we needed to do to get into the Bahamas, especially um, My Sky Aviation Solutions Group, Elliot Mincer, um, Doug Robertson with DBL Aviation, um, and a couple other friends that I'll just leave out of the video, but uh, thank you all very, very much. Um, 
We are planning to be at Oshkosh this year, uh, but in the meantime, I got a couple other videos that we're planning to film and then put out. So uh, stay tuned for those. And um, as always, we'll see you in the next one.